where did the figure Satan come from within the Hebrew Bible? Well, it all started in Isaiah, who elaborated a discourse that presented Yahweh as the only God. Therefore, he had to integrate into this deity functions traditionally attributed to goddesses, to demons, or evil gods. However, this attempt failed, because the question of evil is not resolved in the Hebrew Bible. Some texts admit the autonomy of evil. Isaiah 45 claims that Yahweh himself is at the origin of evil. The point being, if there's only one God, he then is responsible for evil. The three major monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all allow for some kind of a dualism by admitting a Satan, and also for angels, intermediaries between God and mankind. During the times of the Israelite and Judean monarchies, the cult of Yahweh did not differ much from the religious conceptions of Israel's and Judah's neighbors in the Levant. The Judean religion during the time of the monarchy was centered on a national god who had priority over other gods, and whose temple, and perhaps statue, was the visible sign of his presence among his people. The mediators of this presence were the king, and by delegation the priests. There is also clear biblical and extra-biblical evidence that until King Josiah's reform, Yahweh was associated with the goddess Asherah, whose title may have been the Queen of Heaven. Apparently, the title could have been used for different goddesses as well. The collapse of Judah was apparently explained by parts of the population as a punishment of the Queen of Heaven, whose cult had been neglected by the Judeans. Jeremiah portrays, the Judeans have fled to Egypt complaining, but ever since we stopped burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have had, had nothing and have been perishing by the sword and famine. Here, the destruction of Jerusalem is seen as being provoked by the Queen of Heaven, angry that she wasn't being worshipped any longer. And the idea that the disaster is happening because of a deity that becomes angry with his people and abandons it is well attested to in the ancient Near East. The idea that Babylonian gods would have been defeated, Yahweh apparently offered for parts of the Judean population a possible explanation for the events of 587 BCE. Yahweh's arm is not too short to save and can be understood as a reaction against those who were not convinced any more of Yahweh's powers. And the authors of Second Kings insist that the fact that the Babylonians who destroyed Jerusalem had been sent by Yahweh himself to strike his people. Yahweh sent bands of Chaldeans, bands of Armenians, bands of Moabites, and bands of the Ammonites, and probably the Notrites and the Tutites, and he sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of Yahweh. Then he spoke by his servants, the prophets. This happened to Jerusalem and Judea because of the anger of Yahweh. And he threw them away from his face. And the idea that Yahweh controlled the Babylonians who became his tool to carry out his judgment was taken over and elaborated in the book of Isaiah. This scroll seems to understand the fall of Jerusalem as a sign of divine wrath, which led Yahweh to hide himself and not to intervene in favor of his people. I was angry with my people. I profaned my heritage. But the author of this book, or a later redactor who also claims that Yahweh's anger does not last for a long time, but that this time of wrath has definitely come to an end. For a brief moment I abandon you, but with great compassion I will gather you in overflowing wrath for a moment. I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says Yahweh, your Redeemer. In polytheistic systems, the existence of misfortune and evil is not problematic. There has always been demons. There are always demons or evil deities or other frightening gods that are responsible for bad things affecting human beings. The problem arises in a one-God-centered system. This can be observed in the biblical version of the flood story. In the Mesopotamian accounts, 
there are two different types of gods, those who decide to exterminate humankind and the friendly God who warns the future survivor. In Genesis 6-9, however, Yahweh has to play both parts. He decides to destroy all creatures, and he also alerts Noah in order to make mankind and the animals to survive. Again, Isaiah also asserts that Yahweh is responsible for good and evil. I am Yahweh, and there is no other besides me, no God. I arm you, and though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one beside me. I am Yahweh, and there is no other. I form light, and I create darkness. I do peace, and I create evil. I am Yahweh, and I do all these things. Does this not refer to the fact that Yahweh is responsible not only for peace, but also for war and defeats? This is an ideology that says Yahweh provokes cataclysms in order to punish his people. The parallel with the creation of light and darkness suggests a more general meaning. A similar idea is in the religious prologue to Job, where Job responds to his wife, Should we receive what is good from the deity and not also receive what is evil? You might ask if the creation of evil can also be understood at least partially as a reaction to Persian dualism. According to it, Ahura Mazda is only the god of the good. You might ask if the creation of evil, and be it as it may, the attempt to integrate the evil into Yahweh remained, a strategy to maintain chaos or evil outside Yahweh. Well, that's the invention of the figure of Satan, and it holds true for the rewriting of 2 Samuel 24 in the book of Chronicles. According to 2 Samuel 24, 1, Yahweh himself manipulated David to undertake a census, for which he is then heavily punished. Again, the anger of Yahweh is kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go count the people of Israel and Judah. In the parallel account of 1 Chronicles 21, the narrative starts in the following way. Satan stood up against Israel and incited David to count the people of Israel. For the chronicler, the story as presented in the book of Samuel was untenable, and he altered his version by introducing Satan, who replaces the anger of Yahweh, and is therefore responsible for the evil that happens to David. Well, these texts from the Hellenistic period for the book of Chronicles demonstrates a tendency to create a figure representing evil that is separated from Yahweh. Some centuries later, the tendency will develop in some circles to a dualistic worldview, which is not the case in the Hebrew Bible. For example, Isaiah elaborated a discourse that presented Yahweh as the only God. Therefore, he had to integrate into this deity functions traditionally attributed to goddesses and demons or evil gods. However, the simp did not succeed, and the goddess returned in a certain way through the personification of wisdom in Proverbs 8 and the dark sides of the gods were materialized into the figure of Satan. Satan has an impressive career in the following centuries, and this evolution makes it difficult to characterize the Hebrew Bible as the result of a straightforward evolution from polytheism to monotheism.